Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the race look ahead for tomorrow's 70th anniversary Grand Prix. That does not get any less of a mouthful, but I'll tell you something right off the bat in this video. We have been set up beautifully for what could be a great race tomorrow. I mean, look, first of all, because I fear this will get lost in all the hype around Nico Hülkenberg, but that lap from Valtteri Bottas to take pole position today was huge. He, without any doubt whatsoever for me, absolutely needed that today. It was by a tiny margin, less than half a tenth to his teammate, but if he realistically has any chance of fighting for this year's world title, whether you believe he can or not, he had to start that fight back this weekend, and that is a great way to kick it off. Of course, qualifying is one thing and the race is an entirely different thing, insert cliche about the points being handed out on a Sunday and not a Saturday. But still, like I say, a hugely important lap, especially at a track where Lewis Hamilton is so dominant. What has he got to do tomorrow then to take the win? Well, finishing ahead of his teammate would be a very good start. But seriously, qualifying this season has been so key so far. Now, I'm not saying that there's any kind of prearranged thing going on at Mercedes where the driver who gets to turn one first is allowed to go off and win the race uncontested. But Mercedes are not likely to mix up the strategy to allow one side of the garage to try and beat the other, say with an undercut or at least not until the Constructors' Championship is wrapped up. So really, as obvious as it sounds, Bottas needs to make sure that he gets to turn one first tomorrow, and that way he's got control of the strategy, the first call on pit stops, and that's going to give him every chance of winning the race. It all sounds so easy, doesn't it? But he's got his teammate Lewis Hamilton right behind him, and he's going to have to keep an eye on him, because if the Brit can't get past on track, he may well drop off a little bit, look after his tyres, and then try to overcut the fin. We've seen it before, that whole hammer time thing but I am really, really looking forward to that fight between the two of them tomorrow. Behind the Mercs though, wow, what a lap from Nico Hülkenberg and what a chance for him to maybe, just maybe, finally grab that elusive podium. Just an incredible performance today when you consider that 10 days ago he was, in his words, sat in a cafe eating a pastry and now he's lining up on the second row of an F1 grid and he's only behind the two Mercedes boys. Also worth noting, three tenths quicker than teammate Lance Stroll, who has had four full race weekends in that car and six days of testing, and the Hulk has had, what, six practice sessions and a couple of goes at quali, not even a race. That's it. What a story. And you know what? Yeah, I do believe he has a shot at the podium tomorrow, but it's not going to be easy because Max Verstappen has gone with the hard tyre for the start tomorrow, and he's going to be a real threat. We've seen on Sundays that Red Bull is definitely a better car. Max might struggle a little bit off the line initially because a medium should, in theory, be grippier off the line, but Verstappen has put himself in a great place strategy-wise when it comes to the long game in the race tomorrow. And strategy could well be the word of the day when it comes to that race. It is expected to be hot, hotter than last Sunday. All the teams seem to be in agreement that the soft is a waste of time, and so it's all going to be down to the mediums and the hards. And it will probably be a two-stop race as well. I will be very surprised if given those higher temperatures and the issues we saw last week, if anyone can pull off a one-stopper. I will super quickly say that I don't think that Hulkenberg's third place is going to have done anything to calm down the Ferrari, Renault, McLaren appeals. Of course, Williams as well. In fact, I'd say that's probably wound them up just a little bit more. Grab your popcorn because the next few days, weeks and months behind the scenes in Formula 1 is going to get very interesting indeed. Anyway, that's enough of my rambling. Let's have a look at this grid for tomorrow then. It's pretty much the same as it was from the results, but there is one change. And I will insert the usual caveat at this point that this could change between now and the race tomorrow. But at time of recording, this is the most up-to-date grid we have. This is correct. So as already mentioned, Valtteri Bottas will line up on pole position ahead of teammate Lewis Hamilton, both starting on the medium tyres. Nico Hülkenberg, mediums in third place with Max Verstappen on the hards in fourth. And then it's Daniel Ricciardo. More on him a little bit later in this video. What a performance though, P5, with Lance Stroll just behind in sixth. I think he'll be disappointed with that. But Pierre Gasly, he comes alive at Silverstone, doesn't he? A great chance of points tomorrow for Alpha Tauri. He's going to be starting in seventh place. It's eighth for Charles Leclerc, the best Ferrari. Not a good day for them at all. Alex Albon as well, ninth place. He's got to be disappointed with that. For the second weekend in a row, out qualified by Pierre Gasly in an Alpha Tauri and half a second off for Stappen. I really want to see that boy do well, but I do worry that Red Bull are going to lose their patience with him. We'll see though. Lando Norris was disappointed to be, in his words, lasting Q3 P10. And McLaren, I think, will be very disappointed with quality in general. Hope they've got some more pace tomorrow. Vettel in 11th place. What the hell is going on with Sebastian Vettel? I cannot work it out. 
and they said it in commentary, I think it was Paul DeResta, or it might have been Jensen Button, but there is no way Sebastian Vettel has forgotten how to drive in the space of a few months. Something's not quite right there, but that's too much for a race to look ahead and definitely a topic for a later video. But poor once again from Seb and from Ferrari as well. It's 12th for Carlos Sainz and 13th for Roman Grosjean. Not actually a bad result for Rogro there. And then it's Esteban Ocon who will start the race in 14th place. He did qualify 11th, as you'll have seen a little bit earlier in the video. But he was handed a three-place penalty for impeding George Russell in Q1. And there's no doubt about that one. That was a slam dunk penalty. George Russell, 15th, so alongside Ocon, ironically. And then it's Daniel Kvyat in 16th. He did actually post a time better than that, but his time got deleted for track limits. And he was knocked out in Q1 right at the end by Esteban Ocon. Kevin Magnussen lines up in 17th place. It's 18th for Nicholas Satifi in the second Williams. And then it's the two Alphas. What is going on at Alfa Romeo? Sure, the Ferrari power unit is definitely down on power this year, but it's not all down to that engine. There's no way. There's something else going on there as well. Really disappointing result for them. And Kimi last again and beaten by Gio. As I said with Seb, this is probably a conversation for another day, but I can't see Kimi sticking around if he's fighting for 19th and 20th place for much longer. Could it be his last season? Anyway, let's move on. As you saw there, mediums for most at the start, and I expect to see some of those from P11 down going the same way as Verstappen and starting on the hards. But here are Pirelli's strategy options, or predictions really, for tomorrow. So they're saying that the quickest way to run the race is two 15-lap stints on the medium tyres, and then pitting around lap 30 for a set of the hards to run to the end. But the second option is apparently just as fast, is 12 laps on the medium tyres, then 20 laps on the hard tyres, and then another 20 laps on the hard tyres. But look at that for the other two-stop option for the soft tyre start. Just six laps into the race before drivers are going to have to look at changing those tyres. That is why everybody was desperate to get through Q2 on the mediums at least. Unless we see a very late safety car and the race restarts with maybe three or four laps to go and somebody wants to go for fastest lap, I really don't think we're going to be seeing the soft tyre tomorrow. It is interesting though that they've not listed a strategy for Verstappen, but really it's the opposite of that top one there. So pit to get rid of those hards on around lap 22, somewhere around there. And then two stints of about 15 laps on the medium tyres. He's going to be quick towards the end is Max. That is the grid and the strategy then, and a few of my thoughts on the session and what I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And I can honestly say... I am really, really looking forward to that race. Sure, all right, Mercedes will probably, unless something crazy happens, disappear and take the 1-2 in some order. But it will be really interesting to see if Bottas can, as I said earlier, start that fight back. And I want him to so badly. It's nothing against Hamilton, obviously. But I want Bottas to take the fight to him and give us something to get excited about when it comes to the Drivers' Championship. The Constructors is done. Let's not kid ourselves about that one. And yeah, whilst it looks tough for Bottas to overcome a 30-point deficit, never say never. All that said, though, I think Hamilton will still win the race tomorrow. I really do. He's going to give it all to take that win on track. But if he doesn't, I reckon he can pull off that overcut that we're talking about a little bit earlier. So I'm obviously going for a Mercedes 1-2. Wow, Sean, living on the edge. But I'm sticking Verstappen on the podium and not Hulkenberg because I think starting on those hards will see him be really quick on the mediums for the last two stints. And that might just be a little bit too much pace for Hulkenberg, who is, of course, on the opposite strategy but do not totally rule the German out when it comes to a podium. He could well do it, and I genuinely do think he can, but again, I just think Max has a superior strategy, so I think the Hulk will just miss out. Gotta say, though, that is going to be a very fun battle to watch. What about my one to watch for the race, then? I mean, the obvious one to go for is probably Hulkenberg, but I'm actually going to go with Daniel Ricciardo. Firstly, he did a great job to get that car into P5 and was knocking on the door of the top three today as well. He's another one that could well be in with a shot at a podium finish if things can go his way. And I've been saying since Austria that that Renault has more pace in it than they're showing. And it is finally showing at Silverstone. Now that might be track specific, but following that really strong result last weekend, 4th and 6th, they are a definite threat and they are knocking on the doors of a possible podium. And I suppose that means it's worth keeping an eye on Esteban Ocon too. That fight back could be a fun watch. And this is the thing, I've said fun twice in the last two minutes. But there are some great potential scraps and stories out there, including the ones I've already mentioned. But also, can Stroll get himself in that Hulkenberg, Verstappen, Ricardo fight for a podium? What can Gasly do? Can he get some good points tomorrow? Will Ferrari's race pace be any better? We've seen Leclerc really do very well in that car on a Sunday. And can Seb bring his car through the field? Albon needs a good, straightforward, clean race from ninth and a decent result to lift some pressure. And that's not even to mention McLaren, who I'm sure will have more speed in that car tomorrow. And then you've got Kvyat out of position as well. And we could see a great battle between Williams, Haas and Alpha. 
you might have noticed, but I really can't wait for tomorrow's race. And honestly, I'm probably more hyped for this one than I was last week. Like I said right at the top of this video, that qualifying session has set us up very nicely indeed. That is it for this video though, but you can let me know your thoughts down in the comment section on qualifying and what you expect in the race tomorrow. Who was your driver of quali and what are your predictions for tomorrow's race? Now I will be back with some live reactions shortly after tomorrow's race, but in the meantime don't forget that you can of course follow me over on social media and all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching and hopefully I will catch you again in the next one. Bye-bye.